I'm Barbara Elkins, a founder of Webs, and I'm going to be showing you how we dress the loom in our weaving classes here at Webs. The method that we use is called back to front with a rattle by yourself. I hope this works for you as well as it's worked for all of our students. We need some equipment to get started. You need some string, a tape measure, shoelaces, some rubber bands, and paper bags. Then, of course, we need a warp. On a loom with a flat back, you need a rattle that can sit flat. I like to use shoelaces. I tie them tightly because you don't want the rattle to slide. When you're working with the shacked rattles for the wool flumes, we use these little adapters so that the rattle can fit on and have it parallel to the floor. So we are going to make a couple of slings to act as another pair of hands for us. One at a time, I'm going to attach the slings to the tie-on rod. And I'm going to slip those strings around both sides of the beam and the rattle and I'm going to tie them in a bow. The second one, we make a loop, we catch it on the apron rod, and we tie it around the beam and over the rattle in a bow. We need another set of slings to hold the lee sticks. Hold the sling so that it's at about heddle by length. Make an overhand knot, and then I will do the same thing for this side of the loom. And we don't have to be precise. If it's a little bit longer, it's okay. After you've wound the warp and tied it securely in a whole lot of places, we insert the least sticks into the cross. We seal the least sticks with these wonderful metal rings that you can buy in a stationary supply store and the warp can't escape. And we'll take the short end of the warp and we'll put it through the shafts and we'll catch the loop on a peg in the rattle. Attach the metal rings to the loops that we made and we need to catch this loop that signifies the very end of the warp onto the tie-on rod. And I put the dowel into the loop of warp and I catch it in the slings that we attached to the apron rod. And I'm going to very loosely tie the apron rod to the tie-on rod. that will just keep the loop of warp in place. After a while, we'll tie very tightly, but we're not ready yet. We will untie the tie at the beginning of the warp. We will untie the red threads on all four sides of the cross. I tie my warps very tightly. So the cords that are tying all four sides of the cross are out. The warp is in the leaf sticks. It's on the tie-on rod. And now we're going to just untie the counting thread. We are not going to remove it. The warp ends in the counting thread are divided into inch units. And you can see that because the counting thread crosses, we can just separate that whole unit of warp. The warp is eight inches wide, and so we're going to space it evenly across the rattle. And so we will lift up that unit and move over four inches and slide the warp into that space and then we'll take the next unit of warp. So what we're doing is spacing the warp evenly 
in the rattle so that when we wind it onto the warp beam, it will also go on evenly. You always want to tie a warp in an odd number of places. On a warp as narrow as this, we can tie three times. You want to be secure, so we tie it tightly. I like to have the tie-on rod kind of sitting on the stick. You always want to tie in the middle of your warp because that's the part of the warp that gets the most stress. And now we can take our counting thread out because the warp is spaced securely. This is where rubber bands can come in. Spread the rubber bands over the warp and then the warp can't go any place. We want to untie the choke, which has been holding all these threads nice and even while we fuss with getting them into the rattle. We have to disconnect the slings that are holding the rods in place. So we just untie the bows. The warp is now free and ready to wind on. When I start to wind on a warp, I like to take the beater cap off and the reed out. To wind on, I'm holding the warp and I'm going to wind around the beam until the apron rod and the tie-on rod are at the warp beam. And then it's time to start inserting paper. You want it to be straight, to step on the brake release, and I'm holding the paper just until it gets caught. Then I will wind one complete turn of the crank. And then we wiggle our leaf sticks down, and because I didn't wind on with much tension, I'm just thumbing down my warp. So we do this step each time we have done a complete rotation of the crank. I like to leave about 8 to 10 inches in front of the shafts. Okay, so before we start to thread, we have to cut the end of the warp, and I just take my scissors and zip across. This loom, the Wolf Pup, has 75 petals on each shaft. The warp has a total of 144 ends, which means that if we're threading on four shafts, we need 36 petals on each shaft. I'm going to thread one end on shaft one, one end on shaft two, and one end on shaft three. When I take my warp ends to thread them, you must take them in order as they come off the cross. Pull them around and thread them. The convention is that you thread from right to left. If you count out the heddles that you're going to be threading and you count out the next three warp ends in order and you thread them, if you wind up with no ends and no heddles, you're pretty likely to have threaded them correctly. So I have just threaded 12 ends on three heddles on each shaft and so they don't fall out of the heddles, I'm just going to tie them into a slip knot. Push everything off to the side and count out 12 warp ends. And you always want to count off your heddles and count off your warp ends because it's way easier to fix a mistake when you've just made it than to go back and fix it later when you've threaded the whole loom. So we're threaded to an advancing twill on four shafts and the next step is to
to slay the reed. You see that my last warp end is going to be a floating selvage. That means that the end will be slayed in the reed, but it is not threaded through a heddle. So we put the reed back, and now we put the beater cap back on. We want to measure the reed and center the warp. The reed is 18 and a half, which means that center is nine and a quarter. This warp is eight inches wide, so I need to measure out four inches, and that is where I will start to slay the warp. And as I said, it is one end in one dent and two in the next. It really doesn't matter if you start with the single end or the double ends. So one end and then two ends in the next dent. And we are taking these warp ends as we threaded them. We don't want to cross them. So every inch I just make another slip knot in front. Now you may notice that I'm slaying from left to right. The drafts are written from right to left, but it really doesn't matter whether you slay from left to right or from right to left. In general, as long as you wind up with a loom that is well dressed, what you do is up to you. Okay, so we are beamed, threaded, slayed, and we are ready to tie on. When we're ready to tie on, the first thing we need to do is take the least sticks out, and then we want to take the rattle off. We want to bring the apron rod up and over the breast beam. And then we tie on. I start in the middle and I take a unit of threads. In this case, I've got 12 ends here. And I bring it over the apron rod and split it. And I tie the first half of a square knot. And then I work out from side to side until everything is tied halfway. Now you can see here how my floating selvage is riding higher than the rest of the warp. And that's so that when we are weaving, we catch that floating selvage and so the outer warp ends are always caught. Okay, so we have the first half of our tie done. And if you run your hand across the warp, you notice immediately that the middle is looser. So the way I do it is I go back now and start in the middle. I snug it up and I tie the second half of my knot and I drop the tails down. And there will be less to snug as you work your way out to the ends because they were the ones that you tied more recently. Okay, so now I'm tied, and then I just do one last check, and it feels nice and even to me, and so I'm ready to weave. <laughs>